What's up, guys? Do you know what the fastest growing crime affecting millions of American people are today? Identity theft. In every 14 seconds, someone else is dealing with identity theft. Guys, I've had my family members deal with identity theft. And when you don't have much, the idea of losing everything can be scary. And it's very difficult to get everything back in order once you start to go down that path. So that's why I'm so excited to partner with Aura today. They're sponsoring this video. They are an identity theft protection, fraud monitoring. They have a VPN, a password management, and antivirus software, all combined into one easy to use app. Now, we have all tried it before. We have all downloaded apps to try and protect ourselves online. But if you don't have all the tools, then you may as well lock the front door, but then just leave the back door open. And for people that get their identity stolen, everybody acts surprised, but hackers are smarter. People that want to do bad are better at doing bad. So just imagine, like, when we try to get into our emails, we've all dealt with it, and then we find out that hours ago things have been changed. Then you start getting those notifications of activity from your credit card, bank account, crypto account, and then you're scared, and you're trying to find answers when answers are very hard to come by. That's a reality for so many people. Well, thankfully, Aura monitors that dark web for those emails, passwords, social security numbers, and when they do get them, they actually send you messages on text and emails. Now, I use R myself. And when they monitored the dark web, they found my email and my passwords had been exposed five times. And for a guy like old boy DC who loves his De Niro, who loves his guapo, <laughs> that's scary for me. And when it comes to that fraud, every single second matters. So now you can feel safe to connect those credit cards, bank accounts, and everything. And Aura will give you those notifications four times faster than anyone else. And that VPN, it allows you to stay anonymous online. And it keeps everything encrypted. It's time to protect yourself and your families. All you got to do, go to Aura.com slash DC. That link I'm also going to put in my description below. Go to Aura.com. And if you sign up today, or if you sign up, just don't, not even today. Let's extend that. If you sign up, I'll get Aura to give you a two-week free trial with my link so that you can see for yourself how many times Aura finds your info on the dark web. And when you sign up, guys, because I know you listen to old DC, go to those comments below and tell me if your information was gotten into, if those bad guys got to your information. Let's talk to Ronda Rousey now. Let's go. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm at the beautiful Mission Inn in Riverside, California. I can honestly say I didn't never know if I'd come to Riverside, but for Ronda Rousey, you go to Riverside. Ronda, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I will wear the title of worth the trip to Riverside forever now. Thanks. Absolutely, right? Because, I mean, Riverside, I flew into the uh, Ontario airport for the first time in my life. It was tiny, but beautiful, right? And this, Nine degrees. It is so hot right now. I don't understand. So, champ, I just wanted to come and sit down with you, check in. You know, I do these DC check-ins with the fighters and the athletes, and I had to check in with Ronda. You know, I've known you for a long time. I remember at the Olympics as a baby, Ronda's running around the opening ceremonies, but people are asking her for pictures. And when you think of life, right, as that young girl making that first Olympic team, you could never envision that it would turn into everything that has been right now, from the fighting to the wrestling now and being the champion, like. No, none of it. I mean, none of it was even, like, a seed in my mind. Well, maybe MMA was a small little seed yeah. at 2008, but yeah, it all happened kind of organically. I mean, and I remember being kind of pissed off that I was so good at something. Yeah. I was so useless as a career. Can you believe that? Like yeah. wrestling and judo, it's like, we can't make any money, but we've like made it to the top of this thing, which even as an Olympic medalist, you don't take home all that much from the Olympic committee. No. It's like, there's nothing. No, I mean, they used to tax us on what we took home and I, I'm gonna give myself credit for this. I just bitched about it enough. And yeah. Heard of the tax. You became a star. Oh, maybe. Yeah. When you become a star, and then made for people like Kayla Harrison to excel at the next level, and they followed you in this career. Fighting, you became Miss Everything in fighting. Walking away was it? Was it difficult to walk away from the fight game? Uh, I think it was difficult in both judo and MMA, and that everyone else felt that they wanted more from me. Yeah. Like, uh, everybody wants more. And we were all pulling back at you. It's like Habib, right? Habib went through it too. 
where it's like you're ready to move on and everybody's kind of like, please come back, give us more, give us more. Yeah. It made it hard. Yeah, like in judo, you peak in your mid-20s. I'm medaled at 21, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be 25 for the next Olympics. Everyone's like, oh, this is it. You're going to be the first to win an Olympic gold. And, and I didn't want it anymore, you know, and I couldn't do it for everybody else. And um, I think that's a mistake that I made with MMA was when I got to that point where I didn't want it anymore, I kept doing it for everybody Yeah, else. you can't. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's just, I realized when I was in Japan and I was like, oh my God, my coaches are gonna be so embarrassed and they're gonna be you know, so upset with me that when I leave, cause I was gonna try and come back and I went to go train remotely, like all, all the way over there. And after a week, my, my knee was just killing me and I was just miserable. And I knew it was gonna make them look so bad. It was gonna make me look so bad. And I had to tell them like, I, I can't stay. I was supposed to stay for a whole year. Um, yeah. Team Komatsu went through all this trouble of like getting a citizenship or working visa for a year. Like everyone who went through all this trouble to make it happen. And I had to tell them like, you know what, this isn't for me. I gotta go yeah. and do this MMA thing. And everybody was upset with me. But I knew that I'm like, you know what? My coaches are probably gonna completely disown me and hate me forever, but I know that they wouldn't stay in Japan for a year and be miserable for me. Yeah, for sure. And that's ultimately what matters in most instances, right? Like, what would people do for me opposed to what I'm willing to do for them? And as athletes, at times, we try to ingratiate ourselves to these people. And then sometimes you gotta just make the best decision for yourself. And in fighting, it seemed as though it was the same exact thing. Well. I think to be at that top level, you kind of have to be a people pleaser. You know, you want you want to please. You kind of do. Coach. You want to please your parents. You want to please everybody watching. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of the things that makes you excel. But it's one of those things that uh, you know it can be like an obstacle uh, yeah. a lot of times. And um, yeah, knowing when is the right time to walk away. It's got to be your decision because not everybody else is going to come to a consensus. And nobody knows what you're actually going through, what it actually takes. Except for you. Exactly. You, you're like a novelty on TV every couple of months, you know, whereas that's your everyday and your reality. And um, yeah, I think that uh, set, setting boundaries with that relationship of everybody else and not doing things for them and doing things for you, even though you won't be understood. I think that was the hardest part of letting go of that need of feeling understood because no one's ever going to. Nobody's going to ever understand you, but to excel and get to the top of the sport, in every sport that you've been to, it's kind of become your calling card, right? Because I remember we're in, Santa, we're in Santa Clara and you go out there with Triple H and you guys do the spot at WrestleMania. And the way that the crowd reacted to you was not, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I knew you were a star because we've seen this in MMA where people are stars in the game, but then when it's time to transition over, there isn't that acceptance of them. You were immediately recognizable to 100,000 people in that arena. That ovation had to knock you off your feet, even in that moment. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of like you, you try to put the blinders on because I had something to do. I didn't want to screw up. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this will be cool afterward when I let it in kind of mm -hmm. a thing. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I, I was joking that earlier today that I'm one montage away from mastering any skill. <laughs> so pick a song and pick a song. And Maybe you can like, sing now. Can you sing, Jam? Don't lie. <laughs> I can you sing? No, they tried to make me sing for the opening of Saturday Night Live and it was so bad. They were like, uh, <laughs> we're going to cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God. and so then you do that match with Kurt Angle. I remember going all the way back and I'm like, Jesus, she's a natural. Like, but you're in there with Kurt Angle, who may literally be the most gifted wrestler that I've seen in a, in a really long time. You start on your run in wrestling and then the f fans, as always, right? The moment you're too loved, they want to boo you. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of walk away, you turn heel for a little bit, a little bit of a heel. Oh, Did you enjoy it? I want to be here the whole time, you know? Really? Hyper is the yeah. heel ever. And, oh my God, I watched his, I watched his show on, on Prime. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, he was so bad. Uh, he, how, would, how could you possibly have liked him at that time when you were a kid? Because we were taught as kids to like good and bad. He was as bad and rotten as they came. But that's, he was the real heel though that wanted you to hate him. He wasn't the yeah. cool guy heel of like, yeah, oh, yeah. I want to be bad, I want to be cool, I want you to like him. Like, I want you to cheer me. Yeah, he, that jacket that I wear that is like a replica of his jacket is actually stab proof because people would try to stab, stab him. him. Yeah, they would try to get him. Yeah. They would try to get so him. That's what the kind of heel I want to be. I want to be the like the heel that really like inspires mm -hmm. that vitriol emotion yeah. and really gets the other person 
liked because it's so much easier to hate somebody to get somebody so much easier to get people to hate someone yeah than to like them. oh absolutely and i think a lot of people forget that the job of the heel is to get the baby face over yeah it's not for everyone to think that you were a cool heel and it's that, stone cold when stone cold became that fun heel Everybody's like, I can be a heel, but I can still get cheered. And everybody wants to hate, like, want to side with the person that goes against the corporation a little bit. So I understand um, how it goes. So then you're gone. You had the baby. Congratulations. Okay. Changes your life, right? A hundred percent, thousand percent. Like, not a moment or, or thought in my day is the same as it used to be. Really? It's the same, yeah. How's it. traveling with the baby? Oh, flying is tough. Yeah. You know? She is like the perfect baby. So really? Yeah, if she was a little asshole, I don't know how I would have been able to handle it. Jeez. But it's tough with her being perfect. And, um, you know, it's sometimes I'm, I'm not sure, like, am I doing the right thing, making her fly all the you time? Got, you got to do it. But, like, I can't be away from her, but I also don't want to, like, pass up this opportunity. But it's also mm -hmm. a lot of great experiences for her. But I see how, like, happy she is when she, like, has, like, a lot of time at home. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. It's conflicting in a lot of ways. I hope I'm. Mom guilt's a real thing. You know? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, like for example, we um, got a weekend off, so we got to go home to Hawaii, and um, we spent some time there. But then we had to fly from Hawaii straight to Austin, and then film uh, the show there that yeah. day, and then jumped on the plane right after that to come back to LA and. You know, it's a lot of flying. It's a lot of flying, but as they do it more, they honestly become trained to it. They become like my my two oldest are were trained to flying, whereas my baby now cannot handle an airplane because she was born in COVID. She doesn't really travel, so she doesn't quite get it. So she struggles. So you were here when you left, came back, big pop whenever you came into the Royal Rumble. I know, and I was supposed to come back at the heel. And that's the craziest thing, and right? Then, like Vince was like, well, they pop for real big, so she's baby face. She's a baby face now. So I recorded a heel interview. After it's that simple. And everyone was like, what the hell? And Just was, happened. Yeah, the next Monday, I'm like, okay, I'm coming in as a heel. And they're like, no, 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 you need to smile. You need to stop being a bitch. <laughs> I love being a bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my outlet for victory. And now they're like, you gotta pull up for a little bit. So I'm like, okay, yeah. high fives. No, were it's, you it's fun being a baby face. Were you worried though that, that when you were winning the Rumble that you would get that reaction like when Batista won? Do you remember when he came back after being gone and you kind of felt like, oh, this dude's gonna win? And then you won. And it was bad. I was Did you expecting think, that. Really? Expecting That's why you wanted to be healed. And I was expect like I would came out with my guard up. And I think I kind of didn't get to enjoy that moment mm -hmm. because I was expecting it. Yeah, guard it. Because that's what I was got on the way out. And so when I came out and everyone's like, Wah! I, I yeah. like blocked them out and I didn't let them in and I just went in and mm -hmm. did my job and got out and I think I kind of missed out on really enjoying that moment yeah. because I was expecting the worst in people and that's that's how the WWE universe Yeah, for sure. Them. You know, you're like... You think you like them and then they start booing you. Yeah, you're I've like, been in there booing a few yeah. times too. Boo! I remember when you we went to watch you in Vegas, me, Velasquez, and all of us, we were all going crazy. It was tremendous. But then at times people are booing and we just don't quite understand because you don't know how to really play to the crowd. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. You don't know when you're going to get over. But now we got... I mean, you're wearing a sweat top because... Natty, who can be the sweetest person in the world, tries to shame you. Like, what is that? What? I mean, I'm sorry, champ, but I, I mean, Natty, well, Natty calls you out. I know, it was like 100, it's 109 degrees a day, guys, and I'm, I'm wearing uh, appropriate attire, but yeah. She called, <laughs> she called me hick or hypocrite over saying, you know, I couldn't recognize her without a rack out. And, <laughs> like, I can't come to my next interview with my, you know, yeah. looking as sexy as I And as she's looking now. tremendous. Like, to say you had a kid recently, you are in, I mean, you are, you got back quick. Yeah. You look tremendous, champ. I mean, honestly. I needed the goal, though, man. Like, if I didn't have that looming goal of, okay, this I is... I got to go back out there. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to dig deep to find energy for myself. Yeah. And I think, if anything, that this run has been great for that because it's it's hard. You lose yourself in your child mm -hmm. and, you're, and your role, and you're just kind of like, oh, my God, I just need sleep and you're just yeah. tired and any bit of extra time that you have, you're just trying to use it to recover and it, mm -hmm. it forced me to take some of that and dig deep and spend it on my own like health and fitness and stuff that if I didn't have that like everyone's gonna, millions of people are gonna judge you or something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I've never been able to really do that so it, it really helped a lot. I gotta think of something for the next one. I don't know. <laughs> I think you and Charlotte did a fantastic job at WrestleMania. Then the last man, Matt, the last woman standing match was tremendous uh, to finish. But to, to be willing to go and put her over in that big spot was 
it was amazing. I thought it did more for you than if you just won the belt right back. And now, as the champion, Natty gets her chance. I love how you elevate the other females you work with. Because there are times when I look at your Instagram and I don't know who you wrestled. But I'm like, Rhonda gives her props. I'm going to make sure I tune into her the very next time. Before I let you go, champ, I got to ask you about female fighting right now. Okay. You talked about fighting Gina Carano. I mean, I've been saying that. would be the only person you would come back for. Yeah, I mean, Gina. I've said that forever. She's always been my, my dream match. And, like, even if it was, like, alone in a gym, like, Rocky and Apollo. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, that would be good. I would totally do can it. Can I be, like, the person? I'll commentate it by myself. You can be the dang thing. Ding, ding. <laughs> I'll walk in there with my shorts like I'm your ring car girl. Yeah. Big, be... double, extra large shorts. You know, you got to make sure I got some big enough shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, for her, like, only because... It, it would mean so much to me mm -hmm. personally as almost like a thank you to her and we never like really cross paths in that way yeah but um but like other than that i don't think anything else would really get me like mm -hmm. super excited well, you, to find that love again you know you're doing you're happy i mean that has to be an adrenaline rush rushing it, walking out in front of the wwe crowd what about the, the women fighting in the ufc there's more talent today than there's ever been right with yeah. valentina a man were you surprised when juliana got amanda like that uh, I mean, not really. Not really? No, uh, I honestly didn't watch. You didn't watch the fight? I don't really watch fights. You don't watch it at all, champ. I, I know too many people on every car. I yeah. Care. You know, it's different. Yeah, it's hard. It's like NASCAR, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know, these people on the car <laughs> smash. Ooh, it's cool. But like, when you like care about every person. Okay. It like means something to you. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? And you know what it means to them. It mm -hmm. like. I can't like disassociate myself the way I used to from Friday. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Know, and watch somebody get, you know, have a bad yeah. day and yeah. just be like, well, that guy looked great, didn't he? Like, <laughs> I, I always feel for the other person yeah. more like, than I feel I, I hate losing so much more than I love winning. I know. Isn't that the craziest thing? Yeah. How you can find so little joy in winning something and accomplishing something so massive, yeah. but the moment you lose is the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so I think that's, that's why, like, watching it, I, I feel more bad for the person who lost than mm -hmm. for the person who won. And I kind of, as a net, I feel bad at the end of the day. So, but Trav is always like, mm -hmm. fighting is so much of like who we are and how yeah. we fed. And like, he he's trying to like bring it more into our lives. Yeah. But, you know, I don't even watch Geo at all oh my. either. Just the rules, they've changed it so much. I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> you're like the old, you're like the old grumpy person that's like, no, it's not even what I recognize yeah, anymore than what I know. know. It really is not true. It's, and they're, true they've changed it. Yeah. So what about what about the boys? The boys got to be six foot tall at this point. They're both like over six two, and they, they they're always coming up to trapping like, oh, we're gonna catch you, catch you. Basketball players. Uh, basketball and football, we'll see. But Trav always has the same response to them. It's like, oh, yeah. you could get taller, but my dick's still bigger. So. Oh, <laughs> money in the bank this weekend. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. Finally, Natty gets anything to say to Natty as we wrap up. Oh, well, if you want to see anything I have to say to Natty, you got to check out Friday Night Smackdown. Yep. And then you have to see the actual Smackdown happen on uh, Saturday or Sunday. I don't know. They keep changing it up. Money in the Bank on Peacock, guys. Money in the Bank. Watch the champion Ronda Rousey take on Natalia Nightheart. Natty, Natty by nature on Instagram. If you guys want to give her a follow. We don't like her over here because we're friends. We're Team Ronda. <laughs> like, subscribe. Make sure you guys watch Money in the Bank and watch the champ.